So, uh, hello everyone. This is Li Weijia uh, at GFDL. Uh, I'm going to talk about the skillful uh, seasonal prediction of North American summertime uh, heat extremes in GFDL's beer forecast system. So, listing here are the contributors of this study. Uh, from my uh, co-workers at uh, GFDL, UCA, and Princeton University. Okay. Yeah, the motivation of this study is that because uh, heat extremes have great impacts on many factors. Uh, for example, the human health. Uh, we know every year there are lots of heat related deaths. Uh, in the in the world, and uh, for it has impacts on the power system and uh, also, for example, the water resources management and many other things. For example, the 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 fires mm. and yeah, ma many uh, impacts on the human beings. So. Uh, this study we used uh, the GFDO seasonal forecast system called SPEAR, which stands for Seamless System for Prediction and Earth System Research. So we, we used SPEAR reforecasts from 1992 to 2019, uh, which has 15 ensemble members. So the model has a half degree resolution in the atmosphere and land and one degree resolution in the ocean. The initial conditions, we use the ocean initial conditions from ocean data simulation, and the atmospheric land and sea ice initial conditions from the spear restoring uh, experiments, which restores the wind's temperature uh, SST to the real analysis. So this, uh, uh, Refocus uh, initialized uh, the first uh, of each month and for uh, forecast for 12 months. And the verification data we used the uh, ERA5 real analysis, including SST, maximum TREF, two meter temperature, and soil moisture, and the G potential height. And we also used the observed the PDO index, which was derived from the ERA5 SAT also, and the Nino 4 index and the AMO index. So first we define the summer hot days. The summer hot day is defined as daily maximum temperature in JJA season that exceeds the 90th percentile of the period in the Hankas period from 1992 to 2019. So based on the 90th uh, percentile threshold, we can calculate the, the frequency of hot days is uh, called the TX90P. So we calculate the uh, e extreme index in the GJ JJA season for each year and at each grade point in, the, in both observations and the spear reforecast data. And then we study the predictive skill of the, the TX90P, which we call the, uh, the extreme index. So we study the skill of the heat extremes. So firstly, we look at the correlation skill of TX90P, 90% of uh, the heat extremes at different lead times from lead zero months to lead nine months. So we can see the, the scale pattern from lead zero to lead nine. So it has some uh, skillful uh, prediction scale uh, over uh, Western United States and some over the central United States and somewhere over Canada. Similar, we see some similarities uh, among different leads. So uh, from here, we, we can see the frequency of how days are predictable 
on seasonal time scales. And showing here is the correlation scale of JJA mean two meter temperature at different leads. So similar as the extreme scale, so we just look at the seasonal mean temperature scale because the previous studies have shown that the uh, mean temperatures contribute to the extreme predictions. So we see the mean two meter temperature has a lot higher uh, scale uh, at different leads compared to the scale of the extremes. And it shows some similarities also over Western North America. It has a lot of uh, prediction skills. So we, we can see that the, the skill patterns uh, resemble those of the extreme pattern. And the skillful prediction of the two meter temperature, mean temperature contributes to the skill of the heat prediction. The extreme prediction. So, knowing that, showing that we the heat extreme has uh, prediction skills. Now we want to look at uh, the predictable patterns of the extremes. Just like the EOF analysis, we use another uh, analysis called the average predictability time analysis to find the most predictable um, components of the extreme. So here we find uh, three predictable components of uh, North America heat extreme in the JJA season. The first uh, component we see, it has a single sign over the continent. Uh, and the time series shows uh, a trend. Uh, the black line is observation. The blue line is the time series in the hand cast. And the, the bottom panel shows the correlation scale of this pattern. It shows a significant scale uh, at nine months leads. And the second component, we see a structure over central of uh, North America and the time series shows low frequency variability and the scale shows significant also from lead zero to lead nine months. And another component we see here, there is a dipole structure over no North America and uh, here's the, the time series and we see also predictable for up to four months. So, um, having uh, the identifying the predictable components here, then we want to know the predictability sources of these uh, heat extremes. First, uh, we correlated the time series of the oh. By the way, the first component, because it has a trend, we think is um, likely due to the climate change. So then we want to uh, see the predictable uh, sources of the second and the third components. Then we correlated the time series of the second component and the third component with global SST. For the second component in the observations and the model shows negative uh, PDO-like pattern over North, America, North, North Pacific and uh, AMO-like uh, SAT patterns over um, the North Atlantic. Actually, if we correlated the, the PDO index and the AMO index with the uh, time series of the second component, they are significantly correlated. So we think this mode is related to the PDO and the AMO like uh, SITs. And for the, the third predictable component, the SST pattern shows a central Pacific La Nina pattern in the observations and in the model. So the third component, we 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 think it's um, 
it's related to the El Nino. Oh, this figure will further demonstrate the relationship between and the PDO and the heat extremes over North America. So we correlated the uh, time series uh, of uh, uh, PD uh, of the heat extreme with the PDO index. We see the they are uh, significantly correlated over Central uh, Amer North America, which is uh, uh, similar to the second predictable component. And from the circulation, we see there is a wave train like circulation in the 500 millibar height. So here we just demonstrate that PDO does contribute to the uh, heat extremes over North America. Another uh, a predictability source can be the soil moisture because the land condition can um, have feedbacks with the atmosphere. And then similarly, we correlated the time series of the second component with the soil moisture over North America, and for and same for the third component. We see over central North America uh, in observations and model both show the uh, dry conditions there, and for the third component, we see also a dipole. Uh, structure in model and observation which is similar to the uh, third predictable component. So we think soil moisture also contribute to the predictive uh, scale of North American uh, summertime heat extremes. The, this one, um, we want to compare the raw prediction scale of heat extremes with the reconstructed scale with the three predictable components we just diagnosed. So with those, uh, the hypothesis is that using only three predictable components uh, to reconstruct the forecast, it can overperform the raw forecast, forecast because the a, a cancels out the noise in the forecast. So here shows the raw uh, predictive scale that average over all the lead time and the reconstructed scale from three predictable components. And the difference we show the reconstructed scale is higher than the raw uh, forecast scale. And from another perspective, we calculate the number of uh, significant uh, correlation uh, the area of with significant correlation scale in the raw forecast in blue here and the reconstructed scale. So we see reconstructed scale at all leads, oh, except the, the lead zero, a outperform the, the raw forecast. So here we summarize this uh, study, like we look at the North American summertime heat extremes, which are scale for predictable on seasonal time scales. And the trend component and the AMO PDO like component are predictable uh, at least nine months. And the ENSO related component is predictable up to four months. So we conclude that climate change PDO and AMO like SSTs and El Nino and local soil moisture uh, uh, all, all contribute to the predictive scale of North American summer heat extremes. And the reconstructed forecast with uh, three predictable components outperform the raw model forecast. Here I conclude. Uh, so stop here and then take questions. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you, Li Wei, for a very interesting talk. Any question or comment from the floor? So it is good to see that you understand the major sources for those predictability of heat waves over North America. 
So I'm wondering whether you try to do kind of real time forecast for this year summer case, because this year also you have a very severe heat waves over many part of North America. So I'm wondering whether uh, we can also be also successful to predict some of those heat wave event or just the number of heat wave event over the entire summer. Uh, actually, we look at uh, yeah, at least uh, from June, July, there is a uh, uh, heat waves over Western United States, Pacific Northwest. Uh, we look at our model, just a very preliminary uh, analysis. Uh, the forecast model predict, uh, you know, pre uh, well predict uh, the heat extremes over there. 